want to start, you know, I, I, I want to start this conversation today, um, as I always do. So um, I, I always love to hear the stories of the people who join me in my show. As I was telling uh, somebody the other day, this um, quarantine has given me the opportunity to really get to know some other people at HCC. Um, I mean, I've, I've read the names many times, right, for many people in the different emails that we get, but I had not had the opportunity to personally meet um, most of the people at HCC. And so I, I'm really appreciating, you know, that opportunity that I've been granted through these interviews uh, and the series that we're doing with Howard Community College. And every story is unique. Every story uh, is, is just, um, is inspiring to me, you know, some of us have landed where we are because we wanted to do it and because we knew since we were little that I know that I want to be in some type of shape or form involved with television and radio and, you know, those kind of things. Um, but for others, it's like, you know, there was a point in my life where I was like, this is what I want to do. And then by just a chance, you know, maybe a summer job or maybe, um, you know, just an opportunity or somebody told me to come and volunteer. I started doing that and then I fell in love with it. I ended up switching my career path. So that's the part that I like uh, about this story is, is that, you know, everybody's unique and everybody is where they are um, by choice and by the different circumstances of life. So I'd love, I'd love to start hearing, you know, your story and finding out how Margaret get to where she is today to be the Dean of English and World Languages. So if we can start with your story, uh, I'm just gonna give you that time now to tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, sure. So I went to um, uh, college in upstate New York and um, I was determined not to be a teacher because that's what my mother was, right? So I tried so many different careers. I, I, I took computer science classes, I took language classes, journalism classes, all these different classes. And then my senior year, I ended up in education classes. And I just, I knew that was my passion, right? So I thought, okay. <laughs> so instead of being that rebellious teenager, let me go for what my passion is. So then I moved to Boston and went to Northeastern University and um, my master's was in curriculum and instruction for teaching purposes with uh, a focus on reading and English. And I was so excited about that. I knew I had found what I wanted to do. I love being in the classroom with students. Um, I did several te student teaching. Um, I got dual certification. And then um, my husband and I, um, we transferred to Maryland. And um, when I got here, there were no openings in high school, teaching high school students. So I just happened to find an open opening at a, a, a small technical college um, nearby Capital College. And I started teaching college students and I found I really loved students at that point where they were sort of taking off and finding what their passion was. And I also love the fact that I was constantly doing a sales pitch with students at a technical college about how important their reading and writing skills were. <laughs> so um, I enjoyed that. And when my husband and I moved to Howard County, I, um, I started teaching uh, uh, courses, English uh, uh, reading and writing courses. I also did some placement testing. I did some English as a second language tutoring. I did a, a bunch of different jobs on campus. And I, I've now been at HCC for almost 30 years. <laughs> and um, I just totally enjoyed it. I've worked on both the student services side of the house with academic support and learning assistance and some of the retention programs. And then I um, pursued my doctorate in um, uh, educational leadership for changing populations. And I, uh, my dissertation work had a focus on locus of control and brain research based um, instructional strategies for beginning college students. And um, 
So then I moved to the academic side of the house so that I could be, be in the classroom more um, using what I had learned. And um, I just have been so happy here. This is definitely, I found my passion and I enjoy helping others find their passion too. So. But you know how beautiful is that I did not want to do this. I just definitely <laughs> <laughs> said to myself, no, I'm not going to go that route. And here you are many years later, loving it and enjoying it and continuing to do it. Um, it's, it's just uh, to me, that's beautiful. You know how we're weaving in our lives and how <laughs> we find ourselves um, through different situations in life. It, it's part of our beautiful stories. And, you know, a part of that story, and, and I have to say, so as I was going through also figuring out, okay, what do I want to do? And where do I fit in, you know, in my career and professionally and, and all of that, I always looked at careers like, you know, that have the name of a language, right? Like in this class, in this, in this case, English and word languages. I was like, what can you do with that? I was like, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I was not understanding how that would lead me to a career I was because much like you I was like I don't want to teach you know mm -hmm. and in my case my first uh, language was Spanish and I was like I don't want to teach, teach Spanish and how much more can I learn from Spanish I already speak the language right I already read the language so uh, tell us a little bit about that you know when somebody's looking at a career in English and word languages you know what what can that lead to professionally mm -hmm. so um I think I feel so fortunate to be in this division. And within our division, we have English as a second language, English and world languages. And so we have three different programs that we offer now. One is um, for English and one is for uh, world languages and culture. And one is, a, we're just starting in the fall, a general studies liberal arts program. And what I have found throughout the years, and this is what I share with my students all the time, is that these kinds of programs are a gateway to any career, really. Um, when you talk to today's employers, they might have um, five students who graduate with this major and or 10 that graduate with this major, but what they really wanna see are the people who have the strong communication skills, writing skills, the interpersonal skills, the cultural awareness, um, and, I, and appreciation. And I think that I see this, this, these areas as a springboard really into any career. I, I will tell you uh, from what I've um, seen, a lot of our uh, English majors go into communications areas. They can go into business. They can go into, um, even into law and areas like that, one of the main uh, undergraduate degrees for legal um, uh, positions would be English. Um, and again, to be able to um, write well, express yourself, create, form an argument that's you know founded in logic, and those are the skills that, that we teach in our courses. And especially in our area between um, Baltimore and Washington, we have so many government jobs and again between English and then world languages uh, uh, we are also uh, we have a lot of large corporations who are have uh, they have um, areas that are global in nature so of course they want people who have the maybe the ability to speak a language but also to be aware of the different cultures of the people that they are working with so that they can appreciate and connect with them better. So I, I really see so many opportunities, you know, I could go down the list and, and truly I feel like I've seen our students go into it just uh, so many different areas. Um, you know, you said something really, really that, that really resonates with me. Understand the culture, not just speak the language because um, I, I'm from Ecuador, so I, I grew up in Ecuador. My first language is Spanish, and I learned English. Um, ever, ever since I was, I was in kindergarten, I, I, I was taking English classes, so I spoke the language. I really did. But then when I first came to this, to this country, it was still very much a shock for me, and once the accent was totally different, and then two, all of these little sayings that are 
particular to even different areas within the, the, the United States, like one of the first things that somebody asked me was, what's up? And I literally just looked up and I was like, the, the ceiling, the sky, like, I don't know what you, you know, I don't know what you mean. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, speaking the language opens doors. Mm -hmm. It definitely opens doors. But then to actually have that understanding of the culture uh, is not the same when I go to a doctor who speaks Spanish, but would, has never been, uh, you know, exposed to the culture other than that. Uh, that when I go to somebody who, you know, if I speak about the diet, they don't think pizza and burgers because they know that that's not my diet, right? <laughs> like they know that our diet is very different and, and things like that. So it's really um, in a global world, I think that it's really, really important to keep that in mind now that we are so connected. Um, I can be, you know, I'm, I'm at home, you're at your home and here we are connected and we can do the same thing with people all over the world. So I guess with uh, that understanding, you know, I'd love to talk about the mission because I have a feeling that the mission of the English and World Language Exhibition has a lot to do with that interconnectivity and that globalization. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 yes, you're absolutely right. I, I think, um, like I said before, we have English as a second language, English and world languages departments in our area. And our college uh, is really has one of the largest international student populations of the community colleges in Maryland. We, we have over a hundred different countries represented um, in terms of our students. And so those international students, definitely not all of them take English as a second language because you know they've been speaking, many of them, they've been speaking English uh, for a good part of their lives but it adds a rich richness to the cultures and the students that we interact with in, in the classroom for sure. Um, and then with our world languages program, I would say we have one of the largest offerings in the area in terms of the number of different languages that we offer, um, everything from Arabic to Mandarin Chinese to Spanish, French, German, Italian, Hindi, Turkish, you know, Russian and the list list goes on. So of course, our, our, our mission has to do with that idea that um, one, for all of our departments, we want to create these quality, innovative learning experiences, right? Um, and, and we are very much into interactive learning and, and sharing. And um, also, we incorporate service learning. And um, again, all of this involves a, a cultural awareness. And we wanna teach our, our students some of those essential academic skills, reading and writing and listening and interacting with other students, critical thinking, creative thinking, but also those cultural and global competencies. Um, uh, and that come with, hopefully come with a world languages proficiency. But like you said, there are so many um, places that will teach a language and teach it purely from a grammatical sentence skills kind of approach. And we really like to teach it within the cultural context. It's about having conversations and having conversations that you would have with the people in the countries and the areas that speak the languages that, that you're learning. And therefore you have to know about their food, as you said, about their holidays, about their culture, about their dress, about what their livelihood is in, in that area. Um, a little bit about, you know, the, the history, the anthropology, the, <laughs> of the arts of, of that area. And um, we work so closely with some of the other divisions at the college, um, arts and humanities, for example, um, we share uh, some faculty and we share some courses. Um, we, we do uh, film classes that focus in on specific cultures and uh, literature classes that, for example, are, we have an Asian literature class um, and um, a Latin American literature class. And then we also work with social sciences and we have um, a Middle Eastern anthropology class and, and some of those classes that connect and um, for the programs that we offer, we require that students take these classes, not just the language classes alone. 
even though those language classes do offer some culture in them, we really want to ha have our students have that full experience. Um, so that's the mission of our, our division. And I would say personally, um, I, we, we also have a mission to, uh, you know, the, the college's strategic in, uh, initiatives are student success, organizational excellence, building partnerships. So we are all about that in our, um, in our classes. And we want students to have these experiences and we also want them to be successful and we can do that by connecting them to resources, both at the college and, and in the community. And again, um, a lot of our areas have very strong relationships with the community. Um, for example, if we're teaching an Arabic class and we have instructors who are connected with the community resources, how great an experience that is for the students to talk to people who are working in the community um, and using the language in different ways and, and, and share with them. So um, I think that's part of what we do with our mission. Yeah. And you know, that exposure, even if it is, you know, just within, it's still, you know, at home, not necessarily traveling abroad. Uh, although if you can do it, I highly, highly recommend and suggest that. And I know that HCC offers many opportunities uh, for that. but. Just to really, if you, if you want to le learn a language, this is what my personal experience. So as I said before, I started le learning English um, since I went to pre-K. Like I, you know, I, my entire life, I went to one private school uh, for all of the years of education I had. And English was really important for that particular school. So ever since I was little, I was taking English classes. And every time somebody traveled from the States, I was able to have conversations. But when I found myself immersed in a situation where it was more than one person um, and it was more people, I did not understand what they were saying. I did not understand, you know, what was happening. So I, I remember I started watching the show Friends. That was <laughs> at the time the popular show. And I was reading their lips. You know, I was reading their lips on television and trying and eventually started catching one word and two words. And three words and then you know that's how I my, the English the, the foundation that I already had kind of like started flourishing and, and then I was able to really start to um, understand better and better what was being said to me um, so it's you know that that's what you're offering students through those partnerships to put them in a situation where they are with people who speak that language that they're trying to learn where they can get a little taste of what that culture really is like, because it's one thing to read it on and on books or even watch it on TV like I was doing, but it's very different when you're interacting day to day, when you're actually listening, because as I said, you know, when they tell you what's up, you will know what that really means without looking up. <laughs> to try to figure uh, yeah. it out. <laughs> uh, I was just thinking when you were saying that we have, um, for our, our Mandarin Chinese, we have a, a, a one of our, our lead instructor for that course. Um, she works very closely with the Harry County Chinese School, and we uh, and which ha has a very large program. And there are lots of cultural events, and she invites all those students, all her students, to those cultural events. And she also gets them on WeChat, is it? And they, um, they have an opportunity to do some chatting, sort of like we would, <laughs> you know, with their uh, peers in, in another language, in, you know, and sometimes in another country, actually, that they're, they're chatting with those students. So it's a great opportunity. So we, we've kind of, I think we, we've kind of touched on the next question that I have for you a little bit with all of the answers that we've given, but I think it's really important for us to really, really dive into the idea of the importance of, you know, maybe, or, or why, why it's a good idea for somebody to take um, and, and come in and, and join the English and Word Languages Division um, in this interconnected 21st century that we're living in, right? So how can, how can, majoring in an English and word languages um, career help us in that type of era that we're in right now. Right, so I, um, 
One of the things that um, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but the, the Maryland Higher Education Commission requires everybody who's seeking a degree at HCC to take a composition course because they know that written communication is just such an, an, an essential skill. And, and more and more, you know, um, some people might say, oh, you know, you don't need writing as much anymore because of Facebook and uh, Instagram and all of that. But, but it's true more than ever. Uh, for example, I just had a, um, a friend's daughter who actually was a student at Howard Community College and she would come to me occasionally to have me look at a paper and, and everything. And my friend said, she wanted you to know that she just bought her first house and what got her the house was she wrote a letter to the buyers and they felt her letter was so well written and used so many details of why she wanted to get that house that she was her contract was chosen over the other contracts that were offered now i know that's just a, a you know one little example but it's those kinds of things and um when I've worked with students who are in different degree programs, whether it's science or engineering or some other, and they say to me, oh, I'm never going to need to do this. You know, I'm going to have an administrative assistant who's going to take care of all my writing and <laughs> do that for me. And I'll always say to them, if your administrative assistant can do that for you, that person's going to take your job someday. <laughs> so you need to learn how to do that on your own. And then they'll come back to me years later and say, you were right. <laughs> I have to write all the time. I have to get up and give these, you know, talks. I have to be able to um, argue and provide logical reasons and do research to be able to get the materials and resources that I want. So I think those skills that, that we're, we're teaching um, and even, even something like literature, you know, which, a lot of people will say, oh, what good is this, this dead poet going to do me <laughs> in my future? Um, but again, it's understanding how people think, how, how, how to communicate with people. It's having a knowledge um, beyond yourself <laughs> that will help you connect with other people. It's learning those interpersonal skills, that emotional intelligence, you know, that, and um, the ethical aspect of all of that. Um, for example, our ethics and literature class, it, it deals with a lot of the current issues today and it helps students to do some reading and exploring. It's, yes, it's literature based, but these, these issues are issues that everybody uh, is dealing with and it helps them to learn how to form their own opinion and to have material to, to justify that, which I think is invaluable in, in today's world. And um, one of our instructors who teaches ethics and literature is heavily into um, service learning. And he provides a component um, where students are looking at these ethical issues and then they're, they're doing service. Like for example, if it's something around sustainability or the environment and they're, they're doing service that helps them learn about what this means and how people can help, you know, that's also creating a workforce of the future that has that civic engagement and is 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 ready and willing to to help people you know not just have the career make the money and and go home but um those are the kind of people you want who are who are able to think about these issues and and think of ways to address them um, which is a big part of the 21st century workforce right absolutely and you said something you know just uh, i mean to be educated to be able to formulate your thoughts and uh, but you also mentioned earlier the listening part and I think that you know in communication just that it is important to know what you're going to say and have those arguments and be able to form your thoughts it's super important and I think we're seeing it more more than ever um, this days to be able to listen to the counterpart to be able to open ourselves to that other side right that maybe we're not exposed to that maybe we haven't done a whole lot of research on and just be able to carry that conversation and make sure that it's an open conversation not a one-sided conversation um so I, I i really appreciate what you said because it's it's inviting for it for growth really you know personal and community 
um, in general. So, so, so thanks, thanks for that. I, I really appreciate that. You've mentioned that you guys have three, uh, three different, I guess, courses or three different tracks that, that yeah. people, right? Mm -hmm. Three different programs that people can, can take. Let's, let's explore a little, uh, a little bit about each one of them. So um, if you want, we can start with uh, English as a second language and then we can just take it to the other two. So English as a second language is, is a department. English as a second language, English and world languages. Um, but, and English as a second language is mainly um, reading and writing courses and listening and speaking. Um, and it's helping students to get to the point where they're able to move into their other programs. So we, again, we work closely with our partners in Howard County Public School, Schools. And we also work closely with the continuing education area at our college. And we have an English language institute there um, where students come in uh, and they may already have a master's from their other country or whatever, and, but they're trying to improve their English so that they can get to a point where they can continue their education here or they can prepare for a career here. So we have some students with different purposes, right? And, but then we have students who are maybe more traditional students who are, are also learning the language but are just beginning a career path and going up towards a program. And they may start out in our continuing ed area with non-credit courses um, just to start to get a very basic feel of the language, but then they want to continue and pursue a program. The three programs we have, one is English, one is um, world languages and culture, and one is um, general studies, liberal arts. So for the English program, that really uh, has a, a heavy concentration on literature, um, which is one track of an English program. But it also has an opportunity to do um, a lot of writing, um, whether it be creative writing or technical writing or journalism, because that communications oriented English is another track of English. So if our students are transferring, let's say, to a four year university, this program will set them up well to go you know, maybe down whichever pathway that they really want to go. And again, like all of our liberal arts programs, these uh, programs give them experiences in other areas of the college. And uh, we work closely with arts and humanities because if you are taking literature classes, it really helps to understand theater and art and other things that are, are referred to in the literature, or um, it also helps to understand history and social sciences to understand the context of, of what you're reading. So we try to, again, show our students the value of, you know, expanding their areas of interest because it leads them to a greater understanding of, of, of the literature that they're working with. Um, with our world language programs, uh, that program gives students an opportunity to go deeply into at least one language. Often our students are amazing and they have two or three languages that they're taking and that they're um, familiar with. And as I said before, it, it's actually called world languages and cultures because it encourages them to take those other classes, the arts and the anthropology and the history that relate to the areas um, where the languages are spoken as they develop those language skills. And we work closely with our four-year partners to make sure that this is preparing the students for, for the track. We, we, just before we closed for COVID, we had people from University of Maryland College Park from their, their Middle Eastern studies come and visit our college and talk about different opportunities that were available there um, for the students. Uh, we also, because again, we have a lot of government agencies around us, sometimes NSA will provide scholarships for some of our students to pursue language learning because they, they need so many um, linguists and analysts um, who have the, those language backgrounds. So it, it's definitely, uh, as well as the language and the culture, there's a lot of exploration of career ideas and connecting with people who are in, in those careers who can help 
form sort of a network for our students. And the general studies liberal arts program is new. It's a joint venture. Um, we're moving to pathways programs. So English and world languages is partnering with arts and humanities. And we know that a lot of times students come to college and they know they're interested in, let's say the arts, but they're not sure which one. So by having this general studies liberal arts, it helps them to focus. It's not too, too general, like a, just a, a plain general studies program, but it gives them a chance to try different areas um, within the arts, including literature, including language, um, maybe dance and music as well. And then so then they can focus in what they might want to go to when they go to a four year college. <laughs> it, it sounds it sounds wonderful it sounds like you're traveling in your classroom and just kind of like exploring the world you know yes. right there from from an HEC classroom I love that mm -hmm. um what are some of the, re of the requirements um for students who want to pursue a degree uh, with the English and world languages okay so we we are again we're community college we're open access so we start where students are at you know we have people come in who have never spoken a word of another language and we will work with them in a beginning language. And then we have people who are fluent, who are bi bilingual. And so we will work with them as well. And um, if, you know, we try to uh, meet a lot with our students. Our instructors are great. They, they really open up to students to talk about what are, what are the best options for you? What would be meaningful to you? Uh, and even if students may be um, already know a lot about a language. So, uh, for example, I was talking about Chinese before. Sometimes we have students who come from a Chinese background and they've always heard Chinese growing up, but they've never written it and they've never had to speak much of it themselves. So they, there's that filling in the gaps of, of where um, they're at so that they really have the full understanding of all aspects of the language. And again, learning about the culture, you know, that they may hear some stories from grandma or grandpa or, uh, you know, an aunt or an uncle, but they, they haven't really studied it and explored it in, in depth. So um, I think we're pretty open about people starting at any point that, that we're not real strict with those requirements. As with any program, there are required classes that they, they, they take. And um, for a language program, we, we want them to have at least four, you know, uh, semesters of language. Uh, but it, we want at least three levels in one language. But it, as I said, they can have more than one language also. So Now, you know, you've mentioned a couple of things. I mean, sometimes people will come and they already speak a language or they already have some sort of background. Some other people might not have any type of experience with it. Um, so. How is learning a language at HCC unique? You know, what, what differentiates the way that people come and learn a language at HCC unique and why should people come and, and definitely join HCC and join languages? Okay. Again, I, I would have to say that I think we, we definitely bring in more of the um, experience, the cultural experience than most language programs. And, you, you know, uh, it's not, <laughs> not quite the same as listening to that tape in your car where you hear the Spanish every day and you know you learn the sentences um, and we we have uh, I, I think I'm thinking of one Spanish instructor in particular who um, she has traveled back and forth to Mexico and to Spain and uh, to all the um, Spanish speaking countries and she brings with her to the classroom every day a cart full of um, objects from the culture. She brings food. She, she does um, uh, video chats with people from these other areas. And so they were really, they're not just learning, you know, see, spot, run or whatever in Spanish. They're learning, okay, what kind of spots are there in Spanish? And, you know, where would they be running and, and who would have a spot, you know? So there's, there's that experience beyond um, and, and make it fun. There's always music coming and um, they'll do all these lessons on the, the Spanish influence in music in this country and talk about the artists 
and where they've come from and 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 play songs that they play that use Spanish and have students connect with the Spanish that is used in that. So I think it, it's just it's not only about the cultural experience, but it's about the, the, that interactivity, making learning engaging for, for the students. And those students are always up and moving. Um, they're doing role playing in the classroom. They're, um, they're doing the music, even learning some dances <laughs> in some class occasionally, um, sharing the food, going up to the board and and they try to use the language as much as possible. They don't just read it and work in a, uh, a workbook and then speak all English during the class. They're really, um, it's not total immersion, but there's a lot of the, the target language being used. And I'm glad that you mentioned, you know, the online classes and, and you know, the different apps and programs. I can tell you my mom, that's, one of the the ways that she continues to practice um, English is uh, with um, the app called Duolingo, and you know she's always there and always there and always there. But it's 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 as you were saying, you know, an app can only do so much for you, right? So she will hear and then she'll get the answers, and it's it's repetitive. And when I put my mom in in a situation where she has to talk. Even though I see that she's on level, whatever level she is on this little app, she's not comfortable speaking. You know, she's still like, and then she tries to understand and she's like, I think they said this. And, and so, because she's not interacting with a person, she is just on her own reading, right? And, and then finding the right answer and listening many times, sometimes repeating or reading from there and, and speaking into the microphone. And it's, it's great. It's great because it's, it's definitely helping her gain vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely helping her at least when she's reading, understand more. But when you have that personal interaction, when you have to have that face to face conversation, I, I can see that Duolingo is not giving her that, you know, that <laughs> Duolingo is definitely not giving her the confidence to have a conversation with somebody or to go out and, and, and interact with others. Um, she would need to go back to her Duolingo and maybe write it on there and show it, <laughs> right? So that she can be understood. So taking a class, um, which she also has done before. And you know, one of the beautiful things um, I have to say is that when she went to her class, she came back and she said, we're speaking English. Like she was so surprised. <laughs> she was like, because that's the only language that everybody understands. She was like, I, I was with people from Korea and from China and Vietnam. There were a couple other people who spoke Spanish, but she was so surprised to see like, you know, the world represented in this one classroom. Mm -hmm. And they all understood and knew that if they wanted to be able to communicate with each other, well, they had to go to English, right? And they had no other choice but to right. go to English. And yeah. so um, it is, it is, you know, learning a language, there's a lot of um, good apps and good options out there to learn on your free time. But I would say use those as a supplement to the education you can get in a classroom because nothing can, nothing can top, you know, interacting with others and other having people. those. And we yeah. also, we have other things outside the classroom. Like for example, what I was just thinking of, um, with our English as a second language students, we have a, um, a center called the Composition and Literature Center, and we do some help with writing and things in there, but we also, within that area, we have a pronunciation lab, which we offer a couple of times a week, uh, you know, more than that, a few times a week, and students come in and um, they all get a chance to work on their actual pronunciation and have conversations and, and speak with people who are trained in helping them, you know, have the proper pronunciation. Because again, just if you're reading a workbook or even listening to somebody, you don't know if you're able to say it back to them correctly. And then for our other languages, like I, I to think of the Chinese, for, for example, our Chinese instructor holds something called a conversation corner once a week. And she and sometimes a couple of her lab instructors will sit there and students will come and they'll talk, they'll share food and they'll just have conversations 
to be able to practice outside of the classroom, you know, in a safe environment where they're not being graded or anything like that. So that makes it a little easier. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're building friendships, you know, you're building, you know, other relationships that go farther than the classroom while you're learning, uh, you know, that language or just even just communication, you know, just plain communication. Um, I know you guys also have a program that's called Star Talk, and I definitely want to talk about it. So if you can tell us a little more about that and who's eligible to enroll. So um, Star Talk is a, a, it's funded through the government, the NSA uh, office, again, because they know that they need to create a stronger pipeline of people who can speak languages. And so uh, for about 14 years now, each year we write a grant proposal to offer this program at the college and um, fingers crossed we've been successful every year and um, the in most recent years we've focused in on Arabic and Chinese because they look at critical languages what is most needed right now in terms of world interaction activity business you know um, and um, different areas so they, it's a five-week summer program that we write for and it we take high school students anybody who's a rising ninth tenth eleventh and twelfth grader can apply for this program um, they have to have an interest in language and they have to have some uh, reference letters from their counselors and um, we, we see their transcript and they come in and I will tell you, this program is amazing. I tell you, know, I'm thinking of your mother saying, and they're all speaking <laughs> English. These students, this is total immersion in, in the target language. And these instructors are trained and um, the, the government does a great job of providing all these resources to them um, for training. And within a couple of weeks, you hear these students who, again, may not have known a word of Chinese or Arabic before, they're starting to have conversations, not just say one word, you know, or a list of vocabulary. Um, and they do a lot of activities together. Once again, there's a lot of music and food and dancing, and they do a whole big production at the end. And, and we've had um, different uh, figures from NSA come and listen to their production at the end and it's just incredible to see what they do. So it's usually offered for those five weeks in the middle of summer when once students are out of the public schools. So maybe late June, early uh, July. This year, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, the government said we're going to postpone it this year, but you, you can apply next year. So we have that program in place. Um, we usually start with information sessions in January, and um, we get a lot of interest from the community, word of mouth, um, and we have a lot of people who want to keep coming back um, who, who've been to it before. Now, we, we are centered in Howard County, but we also get people from Anne Arundel and Carroll and Baltimore because we're the only local uh, college that offers um, that program. Sometimes some of the elementary schools offer a different type of program, but um, at any rate, it's it's very popular. Uh, it we it's filled and it's free to students. That's the amazing thing. They may have to pay a few fees, like they go on some field trips to embassies or museums or to uh, uh, community. The, the Arab students uh, uh, go to a mosque. Uh, you know they they do some activities that we might have to um, ask for fees to pay for some of that. But other than that, it's not only free, but they get college credit for it. Um, so they, we have the first two levels in both Arabic and Chinese, and they can transfer it back to their high school and then they have it on their transcripts. So it's, it's a wonderful opportunity for those students. Absolutely, lots of growth, uh, you know, academically and beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, just through the Start Talk program. So for people who might be interested, where can they find more information about this program? So it's it's on our our website. If you just put in Star Talk, there's updated information. The application forms are there, and and there's a note now that this summer's program has been postponed due to COVID. 
we already had a lot of people who had expressed interest. And um, so we will open that again. Um, like I said, usually in January is when we start, uh, just to make sure we have a clear idea of what the program is going to be, what the dates are going to be, and all of that. Um, and, they, and they can start. Um, if they want to talk to anybody, they can reach out to me or to um, somebody in uh, admissions and advising should know about it as well. Yeah. Is there a limit to the number of students that you guys take for the program? Yeah, unfortunately, we do limit it. We try to keep the classes pretty small. There are 15 students in each of the classes, and we have four of them. So it's limited to the first 60 students who qualify. Um, and, you know, again, we're pretty open in terms of the qualifications, but they have to have completed that, have the reference, and they're they write a letter of why they're interested in languages too. And those are always so interesting to read. You know, we have a lot of different situations um, that, that we- I'm sure, I'm sure the difficult part there is, you know, to have to turn people away. <laughs> it is, but we try to, we tell them about, you know, to reapply. We have other options, you know, that they, they may not be, have the same, um, uh, exact program is what star talk offers and it may not be free but we do we run language classes year round and students can take them and continue to take them um, once they start so that's nice so there's a lot of opportunities you know star talk is just one of them it's it's it sounds like a wonderful program it sounds like a really great opportunity but if for any reason maybe the time frame doesn't work maybe you know, there's there's other things. Maybe maybe you did apply just too late for the program. There's other opportunities. There's definitely a lot of other options for everybody out there. Mm -hmm. Right now that that uh, we are all home and um, you know we continue to be <laughs> socially distant, um, what are the, what is the best way for people to get in touch with 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 you or with anybody? from the English and World Languages Division, if they have questions, if they want to find out more, um, how can they get in touch with you while we continue to be home? Well, I will tell you, I was always on email a lot, but now I feel like I'm on email 24 seven. So if you want to get in touch with me, please email me. I'm M, as in Margaret, Garraway, two R's and an O away <laughs> at howardcc.edu. Um, if you go to the website, you can look up my email, my phone, phone number. I do pick up my phone messages still. And um, I, we are trying to think of more opportunities to connect with both students and community. So uh, watch our website. We will be posting some events that we're going to be having, just general large scale Zoom sessions where you have an opportunity maybe um, we might focus some on different conversations around um, literature or film or, or um, some of our offerings or maybe a language related conversation. We have a very large um, American Sign Language program and there's a lot of, um, uh, there are a lot of programs available for the deaf community and we're, we're trying to think of how to do that um, online and, and, and you know there's always Challenges, but good challenges because we learn more and when then we're able to connect with more people in our community. So um, uh, yeah, just reach out. I'm happy to talk with anybody, any questions you have. Uh, Margaret, it's been really enlightening to me as I, as I started our conversation, I, I share with you that I didn't quite understand, you know, why anybody would consider going into a career that had the name of a of a language at the, at the beginning of it. I was like, how much more can I learn you know, about this language? But you have opened um, my eyes today, definitely to, you know, it's not the language itself, it's what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And language is what we use to communicate in any type of form, right? It, whether, as you said, it's in writing uh, or speaking like we're doing right now, um, even visually, even, you know, when you're communicating through pictures, you have to have a clear, message a clear idea um i i love that um facebook sometimes actually says this is this person is um uh what's the word that they use but they say visual 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 storyteller so 
you know, we're always telling stories. We're always communicating. Even, even on Instagram, when you think I'm just taking a picture and I'm just going to put it out there, there is a story behind that. And language is what really helps you tell that story. Um, so you really opened up my eyes to the importance of a career like this and how it can seriously open doors, as you, as you were saying earlier, to so many other fields uh, where you might want to take yourself professionally later. So um, thank you for, for this conversation. I've really, really enjoyed it, I think. And, you know, it's always been important, but I think right now the conversation that we're having and with everything that's going on, um, COVID and, you know, social justice and mm -hmm. everything else that's happening around, it's really important for us to learn to communicate properly for us, to learn to listen to others, um, to be able to express ourselves and have, as you said, you know, that information and that clear way of putting our thoughts and our feelings and keep that openness to everybody else's thoughts and feelings as well. So one of the other things I'll just jump in quickly, I didn't mention is we have a new course that's starting in the fall. It's called information literacy. And with in today's world, with all the information we have access to and, and often conflicting information and, and qu questionable information, we feel that this is something our students really need and will enjoy learning about what are the tools for information literacy. And, and again, I think in a, in a, a responsible world with the, with the politics and the social justice and all of that, we need to have a good idea of how to, how to use information and, and how to work with it ethically um, so that we can you know, try to find solutions and move forward. Absolutely, in, in, in a world where you can find trusted sources for you know, the same subject and both different visions is like, which one do I go with? Which one? How do I educate myself properly? How do I know that the information I'm reading is actually information, not opinion? Because it's important to differentiate the two and th that it is real. So um, absolutely. It's, there's, there's pros and cons, right? As with right. everything. <laughs> Having so much information is wonderful, but at the same time, we need to, we need to be wise and we need to learn how to consume it and how to put it out as well. Is there anything else uh, before we wrap our conversation up that maybe we haven't talked about or that you would just like to tell all of our viewers and listeners today? Um, I think we've covered a lot. I just, I, I would welcome anybody. If you, again, if you want to reach out to me, if you want to learn a little bit more about if I've mentioned a, a language or a course, um, that, that we offer. We do a lot of courses that our professional community, they may not be looking for a degree, but they come back to strengthen like their technical and professional writing or journalism or courses like that, or to add a language in if they feel that will help them. Um, it's often a really good way to, to build their resume and, and to build their connections with people as well. Um, we are uh, an area again that I think we have, we have 34 full-time faculty and almost 90 adjunct part-time faculty. And these people are so talented. I, I know I may be a bit biased, but they, again, because of where we are in the country, we have access to all this, this talent. So I think um, the, the quality of the, uh, courses that that we offer in the instruction it is just it's a wonderful to experience and i encourage people to you know give it a try and and let me know if you're interested in anything absolutely i think that you know to to really understand why it's important to have that um cultural appreciation and openness all you have to do is go take a walk around howard county go you know walk around one of the parks one of the local parks I, I would have said go to the mall, but obviously I'm, I'm not encouraging that right now. <laughs> right. But like really just go walk around your neighborhood even and, and you'll, you'll see, you'll see, you know, the importance of being able to connect with people from different countries, from different places who do not look like you, who do not sound like you and whose culture is different than yours because they are your neighbors. You know, we're all here. And even for those who were born here in the States, 
um, their experience, their culture is different than yours. They might be from a different state within the same country. Mm -hmm. and, and to have that awareness and to have that knowledge and to be able to communicate properly and at the same time allow them to communicate their feelings and, and have that fluid conversation. It's, it's just so important, not just today, but always. And I think that if we want our world to be a better place, that's the key, um, you know, the key thing that everybody needs to learn how to do. So, and one day one, we'll be able to travel again too. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day. Absolutely, <laughs> there's so many parts of the world that I want to go see, and so you know, and, and obviously go back home also and visit my family. So there's there's a lot of traveling on my bucket list right now. And that bucket list just got even bigger. So, <laughs> Margaret, thank you so very much. Uh, I really, really appreciate this conversation. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing and how you guys are continuing to help us connect um, it, within the classroom and, you know, larger than that. So thank you for all that you guys are doing. And thank you. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you have questions, please go to howardcc.edu. If you put on the search bar English and word languages, you know, you will get to Margaret's page or like Margaret said, you can just type her name on there as well. And that will give you all of her contact information.